All God's people said? Amen. Amen. God is good. God is really good. He is beyond wonderful. And I think y'all know that. Amen. Amen. Take your Bible, turn to Romans chapter number five. Romans chapter number five. Y'all, uh, are y'all ready for Christmas? We, uh, in church, we have something called Advent. Are y'all familiar with Advent? The coming. The coming. And when I was a kid, it seemed like Christmas would never come. Um, but now, I think about it and I think, Lord, are you ever going to come? How many are ready for heaven? Amen. A uh, little kid was in church one day and he said, Pastor said something like that. How many of y'all want to go to heaven? Everybody raised their hand except the one kid. So he tried it a different way and said it in a different way, and everybody raised their hand except the one little kid. So he said, son, don't you want to go to heaven? He said, yes, I do, but I thought you were getting a bus up today. <laughs> I think we all want to go to heaven one day. But it would be all right with me if today were that day. I, I think of all the joys of heaven. Mark's getting me, got me new batteries. Nothing worse than the preacher being dead. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Y'all agree with that? Um, I have no idea what I was saying when I, before I changed that. <laughs> Amen. All right, then. Praise God, I'm on. Which really, uh, someone said, I don't really need the amplification. I'm just not loud enough to get into the camera. So that's the reason why I use the amplification there. Uh, I have no idea what I was saying before I got distracted. So let's just uh, stand in honor of reading God's word. Romans chapter number five. You there? Say amen. amen. Let's begin reading in verse number six. For when we were still without strength. The word still means we've been there for a while. When we were still without strength in due time, seems like it would never come, but it did come. God had it planned. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Let me just share real quickly that word ungodly means that is the opposite of God. There's really only two, that which is perfect in Christ, in God, and that which is not. And you can call it whatever you want to. Here the writer says, not of God or ungodly. For scarcely for, would a, for a righteous man will one die. I'm not going to belabor the point here, but the word righteous means in our eyes, as we think of it, because the Bible does tell us that there is none righteous, no, not one. But as we look at it, scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, this is someone that you approve of. Someone would even dare to die. Probably a short list in your life, but there's probably someone that you would take, let you would die for because we do have love in our hearts. But verse 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, couldn't do anything about it, no matter how much we tried, how many resolutions we took, how good we tried to be, yet we were still apart from God. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's me and you. All of us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I am grateful that we have a God who is not a God that leaves some out. He said, much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, that is that ungod word, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been, uh, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. 
That's really what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about not just knowing, but choosing once for all, but once always. Let's pray. Now, Lord, this is your word, and I thank you for the Apostle Paul and what was overflowing in his life by the power of the Holy Spirit as he gave us this great revelation of truth, of really of life. And Christ, he, he told us of the way, your way, the only way for us. And Father, for those of us who know this story, may it be real and fresh to us today. Father, for those who personally do not know the story because they have not experienced it, I pray that not only would it be revealed, but it would become alive in them today. Father, we are your sheep. We know your voice. Father, my preaching may be foolishness, but your voice is life. So draw us to truth. The truth that can set us free. The truth that can make us alive and real. Father, do a Christ work. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. I think most of us would think if we could just get things straightened out, we'd be all right. I, I talked about wanting to go to heaven. I'm ready to go. I mean, when I think of the things of glory, when I think of everything that is good, when I think of all that is real, everything that is of the nature of God, that is, that is who He is. God is good, so everything in heaven is good. God is love, so everything in heaven is love. Nothing that is not complete love will be a part of heaven. That means everyone will love everyone perfectly in heaven. Can y'all imagine that? And we get to stay there for how long? Forever. In the goodness of God. God's not a miser. He's not going to hold back from us. As a matter of fact, everything that flows from Him, He wants us not only to, to know, but to have and, and to make it one with us. That's the glory of heaven it is all of the goodness of God being available for us, and, and it's there for us, and we can have it forever and ever. We don't lose it. It's just the perfect gift for all of eternity. Time will be no more. What a day that will be, a day that will never end. And the things that we think of are valuable really are not going to be the value of heaven. The things that we think that, that we have to have to have value in our life, really, we're going to find out when we get there that Christ was enough. Because we had Christ, we had everything. But yet in this world today, we think that we are living in deficit when we have the surplus of God already available to us. And some people think, well, you know, I can't wait for when I get there because there, then I'll have it. And, and sometimes we think, if I could just get everything worked out, then, then I can have a little bit of heaven on earth. Well, that's what God wants. Christianity is not about putting a person in heaven. It's putting heaven in a person. That means you can have it here, you can have it now, and it'll transport you to there where you can have it forevermore. But it's not always easy. Now, I want you to think, the Lord and I, we really talked a lot this week, and I'm just going to share what he placed on my heart. I, I, I think of Genesis 1, when God made heaven. He was there. It, it was always there. He was, has no beginning. He was always God. But he made something so that we could understand and we could be a part of it. He created in this place called heaven something called angels. And angels were in heaven. Angels could think. 
angels had choice. Could you imagine only knowing good? Could you imagine only seeing that which is of the nature of God? Could you imagine everyone loving everyone, everyone being on the same team, everyone being great and wonderful together? The word angel means messenger. And literally, God created them like he created us. They're all different. We have our own personalities. We say that we have our own giftedness or talent. And we are created with a purpose. And I fulfill what God has given me the ability to do. And you fulfill what uh, God has given you the ability to do. And that means just fulfilling a task. And that's what the angels were given. They were given life in this place of heaven and where everything is beautiful, everything is wonderful. They had a purpose. All is good. Listen to me now. But yet it wasn't enough. All they knew was perfection and glory. And yet, to look at that, it wasn't enough. So Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28 says that they wanted more. They were not, they were not willing just to be the creation of God that brings in glory. And we, though we are not God, we get to bask in all of the overflows of the treasures of God. They wanted to be like God. They wanted their throne or their place of power and position, to be on the same level as God. That's called pride. They were not content. Though they had heaven. How many of you think that you're going to be content when you get to heaven? I'll raise both hands. I mean, you can't get better than good. Y'all like that? But they, listening, took it for granted. And there was something that went inside them. They wanted, they, wanted, uh, they wanted more for them. They didn't want to serve God. They wanted to be like God. They didn't want him to have all the glory. They wanted a little glory for themselves. Well, y'all listen. Because of that sin, anything that is against God, I'm going to say it again, anything that is not of the divine nature and attribute and the glory of God, anything other than something that God would amen is sin. To know to do right and not to do it, to him it is sin. Anything that you have in your life that God does not amen, it's sin. And God can't have a relationship with sin. So those angels became sin. One-third of all the angels in heaven. Two-thirds were in the presence of God, saw the glory of God, and wanted God to have all the glory, but one-third wanted it for themselves, and they became sin. And here's the downward spiral. Let, Let me talk about the chief angel that we're talking about. His name's Lucifer. You can call him the devil, right? Satan. He was in the presence of God. He was a cherubim. He was the the, the anointed cherub that covers. Literally, he was in the presence of God. And then he was cast from the presence of God to the earth. He could go back and forth. Read the book of Job. What have you been doing? Wandering around aimlessly, no purpose anymore. Then he went from the presence of God alone to being back and forth to being cast to earth. Jesus said he saw him falling like a star from the heavens. Then there will be a day he will be taken and he will be put into a bottomless pit for a thousand years. And then he will be released, and the Bible says, for a season. How long is that? I don't know. You don't know. We don't know. But he'll be released for a season. But then he'll be taken, listen, and judged just because of his sin. And he'll be cast into what the Bible calls a lake of fire. Forever, the lake of fire. Now, that's the downward spiral of sin. When heaven wasn't enough, they were separated from everything that is good, everything that is love, forever. 
Is that hard to comprehend? I mean, even in this world, those that are ungodly still have life in them and some form of love in them. We would say there's some good in everyone. Amen? But yet, when they don't choose God, there's a downward spiral where they will spend their eternity also in a place prepared for the devil and his angels called the lake of fire. But let's talk about man. The angels were created in the presence of heaven. Man was created in a place that we know of as the Garden of Eden. And Adam and Eve were there. And they were sinless. Because God can't do anything that's not perfect and complete. So God created Adam and Eve perfect and complete. And by the way, none of y'all, I don't know how long they were there. All we know is God put them in the garden. It was good. And then the next thing we know, they were tempted to do wrong. And they chose not God's glory, but they chose their own glory. Be very careful because that's very tempting for all of us. It's extremely easy for us to put ourselves first. It's extremely easy to know that there's a God, but yet... We want to control our own life. We want to make our own choices. We want to do our own thing. Very easy. We're all there. But when they sinned, they were cast out of the Garden of Eden, and they began to die. And time started clicking. From that moment on, they were going to die. It was just a matter of when. Then it's now about how they live. They were given that opportunity, but yet when they were cast out, they passed their sin down to their children. Romans 5, verse 12. Therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world. That's Adam. The seed is in the man. So the, the seed of sin that was in Adam was passed down to Cain and Abel and Seth. And Cain killed Abel because that's what lost people do. They do bad things. A dog barks because that's his nature. He barks. A bear, what do they call it? They growl? What do they do? That's just who they are. A fish swims because that's what fish do. Sinners sin because that's who they are, and that's what they do. I've had three kids, all born into sin. Uh, I didn't have to teach them how to lie. They learned it on their own. Unless Lynn taught them when I wasn't looking, I don't know. I don't think so. Nobody said, hey, this is how you take what doesn't belong to you. I know the world calls it stealing, but you want it, so go ahead and have it. They just did that on their own, right? Nobody had to teach them. They just did it on their own. And there came a point in time that they knew that they was wrong and yet still chose to do it. And that is a time of sin. It's a terrible, hard Difficult time. Therefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. So, here's Adam and here's Eve. And they sin and they pass it down. And because we have sin, we deserve what? Separation from God. That's what I deserve. So here, I, I don't know heaven yet. I've heard stories about it. Matter of fact, I grew up in church. I, I've heard a lot of preaching about it. But I haven't been there yet. But I understand that God made a way for me. Jesus, before the foundation of the world, came and said, I will do this for you. 
Jesus created a plan. Jesus created a plan of redemption, which means you are bought back. Jesus created a plan so that you can have salvation. It was the angel's choice to sin and be separated from God. Jesus chose a plan where we can choose him if we so choose to. So the angels only knew heaven but chose to walk away from that. We don't know heaven, but we can believe in the gift of Jesus Christ. We can, be, we can believe in the gift of salvation. It's a completed work, but we can make it ours if we believe in Christ and choose that for yourself. Anybody who tells you that you don't have to make a choice is lying to you. The angels had a choice, and so do you. God created the, the plan, and he lets you to make the choice. The plan of salvation is there. Not one person can say in this room, it's not for me. It's for anyone. But yet, you must choose it. So here, listen to me now. You believe the truth. You desire salvation. And you ask him to come in and forgive you. And to give you life. Eternal life. And guess what? He does. He does. Now, church, but look what it says. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Here's the part that we ignore. Can I have your attention for the next three, four minutes, very plainly? The angels had it all and lost it all. We had nothing, but we found the way in Jesus. Forgiveness. We found life and life more abundantly. And to so many, what they're looking for is the day of salvation where they can believe and receive the truth of God so that one day they can go to heaven. But you're missing the point. It begins the day that you receive Christ, but you live it out every day. Jesus said, take up your cross daily and what? Follow me. We've got to choose him every day. Not, not for our salvation, for life and truth and blessing. We're supposed to be walking the heaven life now. And that's a choice. That's a choice. The plan of salvation has been made for you. You can receive that. But the plan of life is there for you, and you can walk that. I, I'm here to tell you, most people don't preach this. We just want to talk about going to heaven one day, and I'm for that. But I'm supposed to walk with Christ in a relationship today, believing, trusting, and living. The word that we talked about last week was proving it. And the word proof meant to be put to a test, put under the weight so that it would, it would show that it can withhold the weight. Please hear this. That's what I'm doing today. I've got eternal life. I'm going to heaven one day because I made a choice. But I need to choose that today so that you can see that God holds up. So we go through tragedies, and we go through hardships, and we go through loneliness, and we go through trials. We go through sickness, and one day we'll go through death. But my Christianity is bigger than that. One of the verses in the Bible that's so often misquoted, Philippians 4, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
People take that and they say, hey, I can do whatever I want because I've got Christ who strengthens me. Listen, that was, that was written about money. And they had, they had made a promise to give and they had fulfilled it. The book of Philippians was written and taken by the, the hand of Epaphroditus to, to Paul. And he's praising them for that. But he's saying, you know, look, live beyond the normal life of this world. And if you choose to live in this world and, and, and you choose Christ, no matter what Christ asks you to do, you can be a conqueror. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. This God life is there for us. But the sad thing, Christian, is this. We just would rather choose our way rather than his way. Walk in our strength rather than his strength. Walk on our mission rather than fulfilling his mission. Every one of us come up short. I, I'm not trying to be rude. I do. I, I'm, I'm quick to confess that I do. The problem is I know it. So every day I know that I have to choose Christ. Every circumstance, I need to choose Christ. Whether it's easy or whether it's hard, I need to choose Christ. Whether I think it's going to be beneficial or not, I'm going to choose Christ. You find life by truth. The angels had it all and walked away from it. And for them, there is no redemption. But we were born in sin. And it rains on the just and the unjust. Life is difficult to the good and to the bad. But out of that deficit of sin, we choose Christ. We don't need to take that for granted. It's the greatest gift that's already been given for the Christian. We need to discover it. When my kids were young, we'd give them a present. They'd unwrap it. They were so excited. Oh, they just loved it, and they tore into it, and they played with it. And then what'd they do? <laughs> give me something else. One of my children one time, he's not watching on video, I pray. We were at a friend's house. And uh, they gave Christmas presents, and their godparents. He unwrapped it and unwrapped it and unwrapped it, and he looked at them and he said, is that all? I wanted to kill him. I thought, how ungrateful. Right? Does that not sound like us? Wow. In my house, we got a refrigerator. How many of y'all got one of those? That's where the treasures are kept. And my wife can cook. Now, I know everybody can cook, but some can cook. And she can cook. And I know when I go open that door, there's something good in there. I don't know how many of y'all are like this, but how many of y'all open up the door and things start falling out because there's so much in it? Amen? When Lynn met me, I had some apples and some water and some mayonnaise in the refrigerator. Is that right? And, and her, she looked at me like I was the stupidest person in all the world. I just was living in deficit and didn't know it. Now I'm living in abundance, but you know, this is a sad thing. I'll go to the refrigerator, and I'll open it up, and there's so much good in there. And I just look at it and go, ah, and close it, and go looking for something else. I can't see it. And our life is full of all the joys and love and the people and the blessings that God has put around us. I taught a group of men a Bible story, and I took them to a lake. And uh, after I taught them for a while, I said, I want you to go look for something. And 
I could tell immediately they were thinking, you know, what they were going to choose. I'm like, no, 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 no. Ask God to open up your eyes to see something, and he'll tell you the backstory behind it. So uh, they did, and they came up with all different kinds of stuff, you know. One brought a string, had a story. One, it, one found a plastic water bottle with a cap on it. They all had a story behind it. And I was looking around, and I, the leaves were falling. It was a windy day. All the, all the leaves that had one time been alive and beautiful were dead and were falling off the tree. And it looked like it was snowing. Y'all know what I'm talking about? It was, it was just abundantly just falling down. And I was walking around, and I saw some green ivy that no matter how cold it gets this winter, it's going to stay green. And I thought about my Christianity. There's so many people who, look, who are looking for the beautiful life, but they're just going to die, fall off the tree. And, and what's a good leaf, what's an old dead leaf good for? But I, I tell you what, I, I got that thing and I put that in my Bible, and it's been a week and a half. Don't it look good? I want my life to be green. I want my life to be of value. And God knows everything about you. And God wants to bless you, I love this word, to the uttermost. If you'll let him. The greatest gift in all the world is choosing Christ. It's the gift that gives and gives and gives and blesses and blesses and blesses from this time forward throughout all of eternity. You can't get any better than that. But there's so many people who just are living for themselves. And they're going to miss out. They're going to miss out. Here's the thing. We have an opportunity. But if we can learn anything from those fallen angels, they had it all. But they lost it all. We had nothing, but we found it all. If you know Christ, you've got it all. Give him glory. Give him praise. Be thankful. It's a privilege to know him. Let's pray. Father, thank you, O oh Lord, for the gift of life. Thank you, O oh Lord, for giving us an opportunity. Father, I know that we were all born in sin. Lord, I know that Jesus is the way, the only way to be removed from that sin, the truth that will set us free, the life that is a life that lives forever, that is the abundant life. I pray, Lord, if there's any one person in this room today, any person in this room today that does not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord, Lord, that they would confront the truth, believe the truth, receive the truth, ask you to save them, ask you to forgive them, to come in your heart, that they would give their life to you. Lord, that's simple, but that profound. Lord Jesus, that by your blood you would forgive them and put eternity of love in them. Save them. God, you're the God that saves. Let them feel that. Let them hear your voice. Let them choose that more than any other noise that's in their life. Lord, help them to say no to the world, no to themselves, but yes to you. But Father, I also pray for those that are Christians in this room today. If they're Christian, Lord, it's because that they've chosen you. They've asked you to come in their life and forgive them. But Lord, I pray that they would also follow you. Lord, even if that means taking up the cross, that they would trust you, that they would praise you, that they would glorify you, that they would yield. And Lord, that they would live each day with gratitude. 
for who you are and what you have done. Father, I'm grateful that I chose you when I was 10. But Lord, I'm grateful that I choose you today. You are my Lord, my Master, my Savior. You are enough. Father, help us live the Christian life that brings you glory. Father, in the next few moments, speak plainly and clearly. And Lord, if you're drawing people to yourself, Lord, I pray the answer is yes. Father, if anyone needs to come to this altar to pray, Lord, to ask someone how to be saved, Lord, to be obedient, whatever that obedience is, joining this church, baptism. Father, if they just need someone to pray with them, I pray that in the next few moments, the answer is yes. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.